Hi again, it's Dorothy with Stage and Cell, and I hope you're enjoying our trip through our imaginary house as we go through and look at each room and figure out how best to stage it so that we can sell it faster and for top dollar. Today I want to talk to you about a room that's probably one of the most important rooms in the home, and that's the master bedroom. And we'll also be looking in an associated way because it's usually right next to the master bedroom is the master bath. This is important because, let's face it, most of us come home from a, a hard day at work or from just a busy day at maybe running errands or picking up the kids or whatever we're doing, and we want a place that it acts like a retreat from the world. We want some place that is comfortable and it's quiet and it's ours and it's calming. And so we want to try to transmit that feeling to people who come to look at the master bedroom and the house that we have on the market. Now, as we have talked about in the other rooms, the same thing is going to apply, is you don't want too much furniture in the room because the more furniture you have, the more cluttered the room looks, the smaller the room looks too. So I want us to do what we've done before and I want us to just stop in the doorway of the master bedroom and take a look. The first thing you want to notice is where is the bed? Well, the bed should usually be opposite the doorway, but depending on how it's configured, you want to get that bed as close to the viewpoint in the doorway as possible because that, as we've talked about before, the bed is your focal point. That's the biggest piece of furniture in the room. It's the one that most people are going to see and notice first, and so that's what we've got to do. You may have to move the bed. Um, and that can be a challenge if you're doing this yourself. Your, your stager has these and of course they are available at pretty much most of the, uh, the retail stores, but these furniture movers that you slide under the legs and then move work wonderfully. Um, I have a set that works on carpet and a set that works on tile. And you will not believe how much you can move, what a heavy piece of furniture you can move by yourself using those things. So if the bed needs to be moved to where the angle is better, to where that really is the first thing you see when you walk into the room, make that your first thing to do. Now, you want to also look at end tables. Most of us have one on each side of the bed. That's fine and we need to leave those there because obviously you still have to live in the house unless the house of course is, uh, is not going to be occupied while it's being shown. But we all need our stuff where we can get to it. The only thing is you want to make sure that there's not a lot of clutter on top of it. Once we have the bed position and the end tables position, then we want to look at what does the bed look like. You know, it's really important. Um, we not only are interested in clean, but in the master bedroom in particular, we want attractive and comfort to be our key words. So take a good look at that comforter or bedspread that you're using or quilt that you have on there. Is this something that was handed down to you and the family for generations and maybe it looks like it? Or is this something that perhaps uh, you haven't bought a new one in years? Well, you're going to want something nice and new in your new house, so go ahead and make that investment now if you need to. And have a nice looking comforter, a nice looking blanket, a nice looking quilt, whatever you're going to use as your top covering. You also want to make sure you don't overload the pillows. Now, I know a lot of us like to sleep with 45 pillows. Well, maybe not 45, but close to it. And, but you don't want a bed that looks like there's a two feet of space and then there's a whole bed full of pillows. So you want to weed your pillows down to two. You want one each up against the headboard, preferably with a sham or some kind of a covering on it. And then you want what we call toss pillows. I love the way language evolves, even in staging. Used to we call them throw pillows, but I guess somebody decided it wasn't politically correct to throw pillows anymore, and now they're toss pillows. So we do want a few of those on the bed, not excessive, and again, let's use our odd numbers, one, three, five, but let's don't overdo it with the size. So you want some of those on there, and you want those colors all to harmonize. You want the comforter to harmonize with the shams, with the toss pillows. And you want all of that, of course, to fit in with the colors of your wall, your carpet, your, your drapes, etc. While I'm talking about drapes, let me just throw something in here. We've talked about it in the rest of the house, and, and as you may recall, I am pretty much anti-drape when showing a house. Now, there is an exception to that, and particularly when we get into the bedroom area, this is important. If there's a privacy issue, for instance, if your house is four feet away from the neighbor's house, and you've removed the drapes and you don't have blinds, 
obviously privacy is going to be an issue. So in that case, if you do not have blinds and you must have curtains in or drapes in there for privacy, use drapes, the ones that, that you got in there that match your comforter and that decor, but keep them pushed to the sides as much as possible while the house is being shown. Now, a lot of people put a small rug next to their bed to step out on for whatever reason, even, even if they have carpet. I would really suggest removing those when you get ready to show the house. It looks like another layer of something on top of your floor. So regardless of whether you've got hardwood or carpet, go ahead and fold that up and tuck it under the bed. Most of us have a little bit of room under the bed and we can just kind of shove things under there where they're out of the line of sight. And most of us have a couple of other pieces of furniture at least in our bedrooms. We have a chest of drawers and we have a dresser. Now, you're going to have to be the judge, um, if you're not using a home stager, as to whether or not those pieces of furniture take up too much room. If the room is large, you will be able to leave those pieces of furniture in there. But I have walked into homes where there's not just one chest of drawers, there's two or three in the same room. There may also be a chair or a couple of chairs. There may be a small sofa or a love seat. There may be a, a cedar chest at the foot of the bed or a bench. So. You need to look at how much furniture is in there. And remember what we've talked about before, less is more. You want it to look spacious, you want it to look large, because that's what buyers are looking for is space. So take the furniture that's not really necessary, store it in the garage or in your storage unit, and be done with, with having that in the line of sight. A small thing, but again, and then this applies in every room, we all have to have waste baskets, right? It's just a logical thing to do. Again, you want to put those out of the line of sight while you're showing the house. If you have those chairs and tables and other things in there and you have a very large room, that's great. Just don't put a lot of stuff on the table. One item is fine, a small centerpiece, something like that. If you have toss pillows in the, in the chairs, make sure they harmonize with the rest of the colors and coordinate with the rest of the room. Again, hopefully you've got a nice neutral color on your wall you don't have a striped bedroom or, uh, believe it or not, I walked into a house one time and the whole bedroom was green. Ceilings, walls, uh, the floor, they had, using green uh, comforter on the bed, you felt like you had walked into a can of soup or something. It was just unbelievable. So you don't want to do this to people when they're looking at your house. You may have loved it, but remember, you want to appeal to the broadest section of buyers that you possibly can to sell your house the fastest. So you want to neutralize your colors. Okay, another thing you want to look at is in your bedroom is what's on your dresser. Most of us, women particularly, tend to put our jewelry on our dresser. We take it off there, maybe we have a jewelry box or two. This is something you really want to get out of sight. Even if it's costume jewelry, there's a certain expense involved in replacing things that go missing. Particularly if you have any extremely valuable jewelry, you want to make sure that gets locked up and out of sight. Again, don't leave your bills, don't leave your checkbooks, don't leave your uh, credit card statements stuck on the dresser or on the chest of drawers. Put those out of sight, keep that privacy private, and keep those things protected. Make sure that you don't have but one or two small items on your dresser and on your chest of drawers. You may want to have one small lamp on your dresser and then maybe a nice tray or a pretty vase or something along this line. Uh, same thing on your chest of drawers. Maybe just one simple vase or something along a little statue, something like that. Um, just something to, to add a little touch of, of uh, beauty to the room, but not so busy that it could qualify as clutter. Now your wall art is important too, again, in your bedroom. A lot of us have oh, several pieces of wall art perhaps and you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. Again, a nice piece of wall art above the head of the bed, depending of course on the configuration of your headboard, uh, is going to look great. Or if you've got a lot of wall space, if it's a large room, you might want to put one or two small pictures on another wall as a set. You want to also make sure that you don't have a lot of sconces, and I know there has been a style uh, at one time, particularly in some kinds of furnishings and comforters, to use sconces but I would really suggest if you can take those off the wall without damaging your wall, go ahead and do that because again that's just more stuff for people to look at. Again, as always, remove all your personal photos, all your personal pictures, 
any collections, any diplomas, those kinds of things for some reason. If you have those in your bedroom, take those off the wall. Again, you want it to look uncluttered, you want it to look spacious, you want it to look beautiful. When people walk in that door of that bedroom, you want them to kind of go, oh, just a sigh of relief because this is a beautiful room that they can relate to, it doesn't look cluttered, and it's going to be something that's going to appeal to them. Now, if you move on from there, you've got two other areas in your master bedroom that you need to look at. One is the closet. Most master bedrooms these days have a walk-in closet. And this is incredibly important because, again, we are trying to show the buyer how much space we have in the house. If your closet is crammed full to the brim and overflowing, then you are going to have a problem convincing people that there's enough storage space in that house for them and for their stuff, even if there is. You want to get as much stuff off the floor as you can. Let's face it, we all tend to sometimes use that as a place for our suitcases, for our shoes, uh, for boxes of things that we're storing, for whatever. We don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and pack up as much of that stuff as we can and go ahead, you're going to have to pack it anyway, pack it up, put it in a box, put it out in the garage or in your storage unit. I have actually walked into houses where it looked like Imelda Marcos lived there because there were so many shoes on the floors of the closet that you didn't think you were ever going to see the end of them. Again, you want to show off space and if you get rid of 50 pairs of shoes and put them in a box and you're only showing 10, that's going to look a whole lot more attractive to a buyer than having all those shoes crammed in there. Same thing with clothes on hangers. Granted, we don't have that many super uh, changeable seasons in Central Texas, but we do have some. And so you've got summer clothes and you've got winter clothes, as we call them. So depending on the season you have your house on the market, go ahead and pack up that other seasonal clothes and put them in boxes. Make that closet look more spacious. Spread out the uh, coat hangers on the, the closet rack so that it looks like there's more space. Most of us have shelves around the top of the closet, whether it be a walk-in closet or a regular closet. Make sure that you don't have stuff falling off those shelves. If you have to leave a few things up there, make sure they're neat. Make sure that the, uh, they're put together, that there's not pieces of things dripping out of a box or whatever. If they think you didn't have enough space, they're going to be convinced they surely don't have enough space for all their stuff. So make that closet look as good as possible. Now a lot of people like to put a clothes hamper in their bedroom, and I've seen this particularly in kids' rooms. Put those hampers in that closet. People really don't want to look at your, at your clothes uh, hamper. So put that out of sight as much as possible in the closet as well. So once you've got the closet done, then you're ready to tackle the master bath. Now again, we want the master bath to be an experience. We want this to be spa-like, even in a, a regular home. And you can do this in several ways. First of all, this place has really got to be clean. I will never forget one house that I walked into. It was a fairly decent looking house until I got upstairs and looked at the bathroom. The grout around the tub looked like it had been there for 200 years. It was dirty, it was discolored, it was rusty, it was chunks of it were missing. Look at the ceiling around your tub, both the tub itself and where it meets the floor, around your shower inside and out, and around your sinks. Make sure that it is solid. If it's not, it's very simple to take some sealant and to repair that because there's nothing more off-putting than somebody coming in and looking at something like that and going, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to renovate the bathroom. When in reality, it's just a simple matter of maintenance. If you have rust stains in your tub or in your shower, there are products out there that you can get to get rid of those. Use them. Now, a lot of houses today have a shower separately. Some are included in the tub. Some are separate uh, units. And then you have a bath. If you are fortunate enough to have one of the spa-like baths and a separate shower, one thing that, uh, that I like to do, and it's just kind of a very neat thing to look at, is to take a small floor-type plant and put it in your shower on the floor. It looks really neat. You can also take a vase with some sticks or some greenery or grass in it and put that in the shower. I did that in the last house I sold, and it's just amazing how pretty that looks when you walk in and there's this beautiful vase standing in the middle of the shower. You can move it in and out easily when you get ready to use it. But that way, 
it gives a bit of color too to add to your to your decor. Now that's one thing you want to watch in your master bath as well. You want your colors to be coordinated. So make sure that whatever you use in the way of decorations, towels, those kinds of things are color coordinated so that you don't have too many different colors and it looks just like a mess. You want to make sure your window sills are clean. A lot of times we have a window um, beside the tub and you'd be surprised how many people forget that that window sill needs to be wiped out too. Again, we want lots of light from that window, so make sure those blinds are pulled up all the way. It's very nice to put a, a bit of greenery on your bathtub ledge, whether it's a large tub or a small tub. That's another place you can put a candle. Again, you don't want to overdo and have something in every corner, but two or three things around a large tub with a large uh, ledge around it looks really nice. This is why it's so great to use a home stager is because they know all of these things to do and they are really going to make your home look above average beautiful. Most of your master baths uh, these days do have double sinks and so you've got uh, a pretty wide counter area sometimes in between and then sometimes also some space on either side of the sink. So you want to make sure that you, again you want to take all of your toiletries and your cosmetic items and you want to reduce those to mo no more than five or six period. Put all of your other stuff in the drawer or in the cabinet out of sight. Just make sure nothing is showing. And speaking of out of sight, one place we a lot of times forget about it is what's behind your door into your bathroom. A lot of us have robes hanging there. Some people hang towels there. You want to remove all of those things and put them out of sight when the house is showing. One of the big things that, that uh, people forget about, and we all use them, are scatter rugs. A lot of people have those by their tub or by their shower, and of course they are necessary when we step out and we're ready to dry off. That's fine, but when you get through with that shower or that bath, fold that rug up and put it out of sight underneath the cabinet, under the sink, or in your linen closet where it's out of view. Because a scatter rug, and particularly more than one in the same room, is going to make that room look a lot smaller. And if you have a water closet that has your toilet in a separate area, you want to look at that too and stage that just like you do the rest of the house. Now you don't want to put a bunch of decorations in there, but it looks really neat to take a small hand towel or a couple of washcloths and roll those up and put them on the back of the toilet tank lid. And you can also make sure, and this is really important, whenever you're getting ready to leave a house where it's going to be shown, make sure all of your toilet lids are down. Now people may want to lift the lid to make sure there's not a lot of rust and those kinds of things inside and that's okay but you let them do that lifting you keep it down because it gives a much more finished look uh, and, and a much more well cared for look to have that toilet seat down so that's an important part of thing to do you also want to make sure you turn on all the lights turn on every light in the house that you can uh, ceiling lights lamps whatever because again with that plus the light that you're coming from outside your room you're adding a lot of, of space and light to what people are seeing and that's incredibly important so I hope this has helped you to some degree on what to do and what to look for in your master bath, your master bedroom, and your walk-in closets. So these things are important because, like I said, you want this master bath to be a master bedroom to be your spa, to be your retreat, to be that place where when you come home after a long day, you feel like you can go in and relax and really enjoy yourself. So hope this will be beneficial, and I will talk to you next time about other bedrooms and other bathrooms. There's always a little more to learn. See you then.